Timmy Duggan, he rides for Liquid, Liquid Gas Cannondale. And the first thing I want to know about is this Go Hard Foundation. It says Just Go Harder Foundation yep. that you and Ian just, McGregor started. Could you tell me just, a little bit about that? Yeah, the Just Go Harder Foundation. So what, what that is is a, a scholarship fund that my, uh, my buddy and former teammate Ian McGregor and I, we, we set up uh, to offset the, the program fees and the coaching fees for, get, for kids to get involved in cycling and skiing sports because, uh, as we both know, cycling and skiing, with, skiing which is the sport that uh, Ian and I grew up uh, competing in in our, in our junior days, you know, both those sports are pretty cost prohibitive, um, oftentimes. And, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of times, uh, 500 bucks or a thousand bucks to offset the, the program fees and get a kid's foot in the door, you know, that, that goes a long way and the, the kid can find the passion and, uh, have access to, to the mentors and the training opportunities and, and they can take it from there. But, uh, you know, the, the big thing is just getting their foot in the door. Well, let me change the subject. Um, that that sounds like a really good foundation, and I'm going to read a little bit more about it so that I can educate myself about that. Um, first thing I want to talk to you about is you are our national road champion. Tell me a little bit about that and what it means to you to win something like that on this level. Um, yeah, you know, just like uh – Going to the Olympics, uh, being national champion is is, is one of the, a few major major things that I wanted to do in my cycling career before I'm done. And um, yeah, you know, it really, it feels really good to check that one off the list. And um, you know, especially the the race in Greenville, I've done that one a few times and or several times. And you know, that's I, I think it's a really good race, a really good course. And it was, it was always one I I wanted to win and felt like I could win. And um, yeah, to to arrive on the start line this year healthy and, and fit and strong and, and ready to go and then uh in the race to to pull it out pull out the win was great, especially since, you know, we really had no team or team support. It was just me and me and my one teammate Ted King and taking on a lot lot bigger teams, especially uh, you know, Garmin had eight or nine guys and um yeah, we kinda kinda beat the odds, so it was a, a super satisfying day. Yeah, I bet. I was reading, um, you said you've had a really good year because, one, you've been healthy, and the other is because you have a very sharp mental focus. What does that mean at your level of writing? Because there's a lot of guys that think they're focused, but I know on the world stage you have to be laser-focused, and I think that's what you're talking about. So could you tell me what that means? So maybe um, a couple guys that look up to you and, want to be in your shoes someday might have a way to relate to what that statement means. Yeah, you know, certainly it takes a takes a whole career, if not a lifetime, to figure out, you know, mentally for you what, what works for you, what you need to, to do on a regular basis to consistently be able to perform at your best. And um, for, for me in my, my career, whether I was ski racing or, or bike racing, you know, the, the mental aspect of has always been a a big priority and I've, I've spent a lot of time um you know kind of training that area um but it, so yeah you, you would think that you know as you're you become an elite athlete and you're doing this high level sport that you know maybe you're doing some really crazy high level stuff you know in, in your head you know but really it's not like for me it's just focusing on the very 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 basic things no matter how intense the situation is or how world-class high level of situation is you know you're focusing on these very very basic things that get you 99 percent of uh the way there and yeah you know that it's easy to say and hard to do but yeah the it's it's hard to it's hard to keep that focus on that real those really basic simple things when the shit is hitting the fan and you know you're totally blown out from five hours of racing and all you want to do is quit, and that, that's when you have to focus, and that, that's when you have to focus on the basics and uh, keep it going to the finish for, for just a bit longer. So, so that still happens to you at that level where you're like, okay, I'm ready to quit, but you stay, you stay on course. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that, that's kind of the crux moment of the race. I mean, anybody can just ride their bike around easy, you know. But um, that the five or ten minutes of a of the Olympic road race or or whatever high world class uh, bike race you're in, you know, there's really only five or ten minutes that that separate the winners from the losers, and 
and um, the, the people who can focus there and not give up and push through the pain and um, keep keep moving forward towards their goal in that race and what they need to do to be successful in that race and, and not give in to the to how they're tired or how they hurt or whatever you know that's that five minutes makes the difference and um, that automatic decision you make at that point that that makes all the difference and you know it takes a, a whole career a whole lifetime of training to get to that point where those those decisions in that intense period are are the right ones right now let's talk about you just got back from london and you just did the road race and um that must have been an awesome experience riding around over there but you know i, I very I, I got up i turned it on and there you are you were in the big move that that went early in that race can you talk about that race a little bit and 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 how it all panned out in your mind yeah you know with you know with our our american team uh even though we have the maximum amount of riders in in the race which was five it's it's still not a lot of guys and um you know just like uh, me and ted at us pro championships when we only had two uh, when you don't have any guys, you don't have a lot of matches to burn, and you have to do everything right, and you have to do it right the first time because you just, you can't afford to make mistakes. And and our goal was to uh, with with our squad and kind of a, a mixed bag of riders, you know, to to put me in the early break. That's kind of my my forte, and um, have TJ and Tyler or, or uh, sorry TJ Tyler or Horner, you know, ready to bridge up in the in the middle or towards the end of the race. Uh, if there's an elite selection there, and then we have Tyler Farah for the sprint. So, um, you know, everybody on the team just did a perfect job, and it was really a, a great race, and I'm, I'm really proud of our whole team for everybody doing their job in a world-class way on that day. And um, Yeah, so back to myself, it, it was my job to get in the early move and, um, you know, have, a, have, a, have an American guy up the road for uh, what came later, and, and that's what I did. I, I was ready for that in the beginning, and, Hopped in the move with some some other really strong riders, and um, you know we were all there. Were a lot of teams kind of making an alliance to you know try to keep it not be a field sprint because nobody wants to go to the line with Cavendish, so except maybe Greipel. Um, so yeah, you know there's a there's a lot of cooperation in our in our breakaways with some really strong riders like uh, Dennis Menchov and Stuart O'Grady and Castro Viejo, uh, Yanni Brockovic. I mean we had we had a hitter group of riders in the breakaway, and we worked really well together and. Um, in the finale of the race, uh, TJ and, Ty and uh, Taylor both came up to me, and you know we had some really good numbers in that move. So at that point, the break was kind of touch and go uh, with the riders committing to it or seeing what was coming up from behind, and the field was closing in on us. And you know we, the three of us, we really chose to drive it, especially me. That was kind of my job at that point to give it everything I had um, to make sure we stayed away through that last climb, last time up the up the climb. Because if they caught us on the on the lap, that would have been that would have been over. It would have been a sprint for sure. So we really needed to commit to that move and stay away. And um, that was my job at the end of my 200k and the 200 kilometers in the breakaway was to make sure that break stayed away through the through the lap. And then uh, TJ and Tyler took it away to the finish. Yeah. Now, what is that word? Use that word commit, and everybody talks about it at different levels of cycling. But at the highest level is what you're at. What does that word mean to you? Uh, to me, it you know. You, you really have you got to be saving your matches or burning your matches. You can't just be, uh, you know, slowly, slowly burning it away. You know, so you, in, in my mind, a successful kind of strategy, overall strategy for the race is you're either conserving to your maximum ability or you're really committed. You're really driving a move all out, or you're bridging up to a move, or you're attacking all out. There's not this in between where you're kind of going hard. And just kind of seeing what happens, you know, you're you're either committed or you're not, and and if you're not, then you're recovering and you're resting. But, um, you know, if if you're in between and just in the middle, then I think you're you're in for a mediocre result. But if you if you commit to something, you're going to win, or it's not going to work out, and you'll really be in the back. But you know, uh, you're not going to be in the middle. That is great information. What was it like for you when you took the step as so many young bike racers? You know, they want to be the next uh, Timmy Duggan. What was it like for you when you went to the next level? I mean, it must have been exciting and all of that, but how much harder was it? Um, I, you know, I don't think there ever is, like, this next huge step, next next huge level. It's, you know, if you're, 
you're, you're kind of taking a proper tra- trajectory through your career, then everything is a baby step, you know, whether you're, um, you know, category three in the amateur ranks or, you know, you're in the mid-level pro race or you're in the, the Olympic Games or the Tour de France, you know, if, if you've been taking baby steps along the way, it's um, progressing slowly. It's, you know, wherever, whatever level you're at, it just seems kind of normal. It seems like the next logical step. And there's never this huge, like, oh, my God, this is just a totally different level. Like, if, if you've been doing the work and you've been progressing well, it's uh, it just seems natural to take the next step. And it's, it's never, like, this kind of mind-blowing experience, you know. Well, that's but, um, yeah, that, that said, sure, like, can you hear me? Still? Yeah, absolutely. I just Sorry, I, I lost you there for lost your voice there for a oh, second. I just said it's good for all the younger guys to hear that and um, know that it's a progression, a steady progression. And um, well, what do you have for the rest um, of the year on slate for you and riding your bike? Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to my program here uh, for the next couple of months. I, I just got back from London uh, last night. I'm home, at home in Colorado here, and I've got the tour of Utah and the USA Pro Challenge in Colorado uh, this month. Uh, both races that really suit me with a lot of climbing and some altitude, so I'm looking forward to those. Um, then after that is the uh, Canadian World Tour races in, in Quebec, another uh, pair of uh, tough, hard, hilly circuit races that, that suit me and that I've, I have experience on, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to those. And then uh, top that off with the World Championships in, in Holland at the end of, the, of September, and then um, my October schedule is kind of up in the air. But either way, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to racing the next few months. It, it, it should be a good, uh, good block. I'm going to switch gears here just for a little bit and talk about your um, perseverance. Um, I know I wrote here that you you, you, you you broke your arms, multiple arms. Can you talk about some of the challenges that you've had and how you overcame those challenges, more importantly? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, a big part of my career has been defined by big injuries and, and, and coming back from that. And, you know, that... It certainly sucks at the time, but you know, I, I think if, if you look at a lot of riders across a lot of sports, um, I, I think part of what makes someone a, a real champion is is coming back from a big low, you know, from a big injury or an illness or whatever. And um, I think if you you persevere through that, then the, the pain and the suffering you suffer in your sport, it, you know, that's, that's nothing compared to a traumatic brain injury or or cancer or something like that, and it makes your sport seem a little bit easier. But um. Yeah, you know, in uh, 2008, I had a traumatic brain injury in, in a crash in uh, the Tour of Georgia. Um, you know, just, yeah, there, there's still, even four years later, there's still a few things that aren't, aren't quite the same, and that was just a super long um, life-defining recovery. Uh, but, you know, I, I feel like I'm getting... I think I'm better than I was before, but I think there's some other areas that aren't quite as good as they were before. So I, I, I hope someday that I'll be uh, 100, you know, across the board in all departments better than I was before. But I'm, I'm still, I'm still striving, still recovering from that. Um, a couple of years later, I broke my left arm in three places, three different times. Um, so that was just another. Yeah, a huge setback. Just not not what I needed when I was just really trying to get my momentum back after my my head injury. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to after after a head injury. You know, I didn't want to just quit the sport because no, my I, mean, you, I broke you came my back my and you were resilient, and, it, and that's it's unbelievable. You know, you're now the national you know road champion, which is a huge huge um accolade to you um to put on your you know or another notch on your belt so you know we could sit here and talk all day and i love talking to you and you're very kind and so i just want to thank you for joining us on cyclingillustrated.com do you have anything that you want to add um no i think uh that's the gist of it recently (laughs) all right well i really appreciate you joining us and i hope you have a really good tour of uh, utah and pro cycling challenge and we'll be rooting for you the whole time Thanks a lot, Brandon. I appreciate your kind words and the opportunity to speak with you, and uh, we'll be in touch in the future. Okay, take care. Thanks, Brandon. Bye-bye.